either smooth surface, titanium uh, plasma spread coated surface, sand blasting, or hydroxy apatite or laser reduce uh, roughness. Uh, mission has work uh, summarized the medical uh, uh, condition or problem for the patient and he divided into the absolute contraindication or relative contraindication. But the most important things for us to know that the implant are not life saving procedure. The prime concern must be therefore not to be undermine the patient's overall health and safety. So you need to know the medical uh, history and understand the medical history, medical situation of the patient before we start for, for any advanced dental implant surgery. Also, before we start for a dental implant, we need to, uh, to have a, a diagnostic tool such as the cast. We need to have a, sur have a surgical stent. We need to use the radiographical tools such as periapical x-rays, uh, 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 panoramic x-ray that show that overall view, the anatomical structure that uh, appear in relation to the dental uh, implant. Uh, also, we need to understand the height available to place the, uh, to, to, to place the implant. For example, this is the total height bones available from the crest of the ridge uh, to the uh, inferior ulvar nerve and for the uh, <coughs> picture there, if we place the implant, uh, the thread of the implant will be exposed in the uh, <coughs> coronal surface. And uh, we need to, uh, to uh, measure what is called buffering zone around the dental implant. So we need to know exact the height available to place the uh, accurate size and length uh, of the implant. For example, this is the case. We place the implant. We have a buffer zone from the inferior alveolar nerves. In the uppers, we, know we need to understand the anatomies, uh, anatomies of the upper. We need to understand the anatomies of the maxilla. Uh, we know that we have uh, what is called the uh, cortical blade uh, in the floor of the maxillary sinus. So we need to, uh, to have a benefit from this uh, uh, from this. Uh, type of the bone for primary, primary stabilization uh, of the bone to go to what is called biocortical stabilization of the dental implant in the maxilla. Sometime we need to take a CT scan. In some cases that uh, we, are, uh, we are query about the width, the ridge size of the implant. In some cases we, we take a CT scan. Today the, we have a lot of the soft uh, computers, uh, soft uh, that uh, uh, measure exact and determine the exact size uh, of the implant, the inclination of the implant before we place the dental implant. The, now we will start how the implant, the, the first implant is, uh, start is called a two-stage surgical protocol established by Brennamark. And the goal for that to reduce and minimize the risk of bacterial infection to prevent apical migration of oral epithelium along the body of the implant and to, min to minimize the risk of early implant loading during the bone remodeling. This is the first implant. It's called the two-stage implant. So we just we place the implant, then we suture it. We wait four to six months. Then after, after that, we have a, a second surgery just to expose uh, the head of the implant and we place the, uh, the healing zone. Uh, to get what is called issue integration. So what is the issue integration? Issue integration was defined as a structural and functional connection between the living bone and the surface of loaded carrying implant. And uh, uh, the idea why we, wa why we wait some time for four, uh, four months uh, from the histological view that when we prepare the issue tome, the bone has become organi uh, organized and mineralized laminar bone, and it's need like four months uh, to have a, to ha to be become mineralized and organ uh, organized uh, laminar, which is sufficient to uh, for implant stability. This is this is a case that the patient have missing of uh, all upper and lower uh, teeth at the same time. 
the immediate occlusal loading in surface implant together with the occlusal provision restoration at the same visit or soon after. طبعا في a lot of the research, this is the research 2002 that immediate provisionalization enabled the maintains of aesthetic and phonetics during the provisional period as well as significant soft tissue management when provisional restoration similar in shape and size to the natural tooth is uh, placed uh, the extra uh, an extraction socket it can be support the pre-implant mucosa outline for uh, of the gen uh, gingival outline and form through the throughout the tissue integration period so uh, Sorry, we extract, we place the immediate implant, then we place the provisional restoration at the same time. This is the case, had a 26 female patient. She received an ortho treatment for two years. Then after she removed the ortho, she have great through mobilities in the two centrals. Uh, after consultation with ortho, with restorative and with rusto bureau, we decide this is the two teeth. Uh, it's, uh, it's need to extract it due to the root, uh, uh, root resorption, which is affect the crown root vitreous. So we decide to extract the two central. We start with the first central. So we are as a periodontist, we look for the big, all the picture. So we have a high frenium. So just we remove the frenium. Then we extract. Uh, in this situation, we use what is called garnish technique, one of the Germany technique that we open the flap evically and away from the villa so we can preserve uh, the, uh, the villa and the aesthetic. So we extract it. We start to drill the estutome. We place the implant and this is the implant in the positions. We suture it and at the same time, this is the implant, the x-ray of uh, after. At the same time, we take place impression transfer, we take impression, send it to the lab, and we uh, uh, place the provisional uh, temporary crown for the central. Couple of weeks after that, we, d we extract the uh, one one, the first central. So just we extract it, we prepare the acetone, drill it, place the bone, Place the implant, sorry, and just this is the implant from the occlusal view. And starting in the lab, we take impression, we provide another provisional crown restorations. And this is the case after she received the uh, implant with, uh, with the provisional rest restoration. For sure, we try to remove any interference uh, in centric and eccentric relations to minimize the access of force to the implant. This is the x-rays. And this is the patient before when he came and after when she leave. This is with the provisional restorations. Yeah. This is a studies that show that the, uh, that the early occlusion loading increased the bone remodeling, which lead to increase the bone dent, uh, densities. But the most important thing that we need to decrease the stress, manipulable force, ala implant bone necrosis. يؤدي إلى بين بون فيليرز. so لازم نعرف ال situation اللي increasing the area of supporting of bone will decrease the force in the prosthetic. the factor that increasing the surface area, the implant number, implant size, implant condition, implant body design. the area اللي decrease the force. Patient factor on plant position, cantilever force, occlusal load direction, occlusal contact, and dive. طبعاً الأسئلة كثيرة هل ممكن we put the implant in a periodontally involved tooth or the patient have periapical pathosis? There are a lot of the research they they agree that we can just remove it, debride, and we place the implant. This is the case that patient have periodontally involved of the upper anterior teeth. Just we extract it. We place the implant immediately. Uh, Radio augmentation. This is implant. This is uh, X-rays. And just directly, we take the impression. We fabricate uh, uh, prosthesis for the patient. And this is the patient when he came to the clinic, and uh, after he leave the clinic. Same for the lower.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Just one question doctor regarding the the collagen membrane that you are used after augmented uh, upper molar I think uh, implant it's kept exposed to the oral cavity Usually, usually you are uh, keep it exposed. Or, uh, yeah. What is the policy regarding an insufficient soft tissue? Yeah. De de dealing with the inferior molar, you mean? Inferior molar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Inferior yeah. molar. This is this is one of the benefit of bicollagen membrane. So it's, it's used as a ba barrier, and you need it just to hang it for five weeks, then it's resolved. So the granulation tissue start to to close the fit. It's, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not for augmented uh, implant. Is stable. Just I put the bone just to fill the, fill the sucker. Even if I don't place it, it will be the same result. Could be soft tissue guided, for example. This is consider. This is not. It's not the GBR. We cannot just. Consider, just we cannot cover. consider it as. It's a filler only. Yes. Just like. Yeah. That. Thank you. case on the society who would like to thank uh, Dr. Yasser Akimi for his valuable lecture. Why we are uh, preparing for the next uh, speaker? I will give you something to share, Macaui. Because I am Macaui, not Macaui. I am Macaui. The smell of wine is in my mind. Ya zugak betan al qadim. Naanashad bustan khayali. Birihah al nabk wal wal nim. لما كنا صغار ودقة لما كنا صغار ودقة وكانت حالتنا طينة ونحنا نلعب في الأزقة ولا أحد يسأل علينا هذا قرصته بقة وعمال تهرشلوا في أمينة وكادوا في وهذا في جيبه بقعة زرقة واصلة لحد الفلينة وهذا ماسك أم طقة يسألها نروح المدينة وده شايل على راسه شقة يخبزها لخالة حسينة وهذا متشعبط في سقة سألوا اسأل متى رايح تجينا وعيال عمال تزعق ويا مطر حطي حطي وحمزة و... ودول في طبيش الأعمى وهذا يجري ورا الكلب وده في البزار استحمى حتى ما تشوف أم الهباب ودا يغبى قلبها ظلمة ودا يغبى ودا يغبى قلبها ضم ظلمة يحرش مين يكش التراب ودا مسوي صياح ورجة ودا كب دقيق حجة. I think I have to stop over here. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Hisham Sayed Al Hawari, Al Hawari, uh, Assistant Professor uh, of Oral Maxillofacial uh, Surgery, uh, Department of Oral Maxillofacial Surgery from neighborhood Um Al Qura uh, University from Mecca. He got his BDS 1998 and then Master's Degree 2004. And uh, he's a faculty of oral, med oral and dental medicine, Cairo University. Please welcome Dr. Hisham. It will determine this might be uh, either enough for fixture installation or deficient. In case of sufficient bone, uh, sufficient both the interarch space and the available alveolar bone, fix, uh, bone fixture can be installed without any other surgical intervention. In case 
the presence of sufficient intra-arch space and deficient available alveolar bone, sinus lifting, sinus lifting was indicated, which is elevating the sinus membrane flow by raising the sinus line, then grafting these created surgical space in order to increase the amount of the available alveolar bone after complete healing. In case of deficient, both inter-arch space and alveolar bone, other alternative treatment modalities could be planned, either by raising the patient's bite using orthodontic appliances to increase the inter-arch space, or to shift the rem to removable prosthetic appliances, and finally, this area could be considered as an autogenous bone donor site, even in the same case. Finally, in cases of deficient, both inter-arch space and available alveolar bone, only bone grafting was the main surgical maneuver recommended, either with with or without sinus lift, depending on the gained amount of bone height and the created inter-arch space. So, sinus lifting procedure is indicated in cases of deficient alveolar bone and sufficient inter-arch space, and deficient post inter-arch space and available alveolar bone. Following the clinical and radiographic evaluation, the final treatment plan was written. Uh, in this case, you can see that the fixture dimension were determined, it's planned to be 3.7 millimeter in diameter and 11.5 millimeter in length, taking into consideration that the available bone height is 7.8 millimeter, so the sinus was planned to be lifted by nearly four millimeters. There are three sinus lift techniques, the closed sinus lift technique, the open sinus lift technique, and the hydraulic lifting utilizing the, size, the sinus balloon. The closed sinus lifting is indicated in cases that need single tooth restoration and the alveolar bone height needs to be increased by nearly three millimeters. The closed sinus lifting is performed by two modalities, either using the sinus lift osteotomes for the, from the beginning to create the fixture osteotomy hole or using the surgical fixture drills. The osteotomy hole is prepared either, uh, in either modalities, one millimeter beyond the floor of the maxillary sinus and to the final predetermined fixture diameter. Then the equivalent sinus lift osteotome is then used to fracture the remaining one millimeter of the sinus floor and to crack it upwards toward the maxillary sinus, taking into consideration not to exceed three millimeters, not to tear the sinus membrane leading to its perforation. Finally, a graft material is inserted through the osteotomy hole and the fixture is then installed inside its place. Here you can see a small video that demonstrates this technique. I, I used the punch uh, to, uh, to access the, the surgical field. Then the flap is, is removed. Using the uh, uh, drills, the osteotomy hole was prepared uh, one millimeter beyond the sinus floor and to the, di to the final diameter of the implant. Then the, the equivalent osteotome, sinus lift osteotome was placed and the si malleted on, on its head to fracture the floor of the sinus and then elevate the sinus membrane three millimeters above the floor. The implant, the fixture is then placed inside its position using the standard manufacturing instructions. Closed sinus lifting is a quick and easy technique, needs less surgical skills, more attractive to the patient, and of low cost. But the gained bone height is limited to three millimeters. That is not suitable for multiple implant placement as it may lead to fracture, fracture of, the si uh, of the floor of the maxilla, of the maxillary sinus and the maxilla. The lateral window sinus lift technique is indicated in cases that need multiple implant site preparation and when more than three millimeters of bone is needed. In this technique, the let the a pyramidal flap was performed and deflected to expose the facial aspect of the maxilla. Using rosehead surgical round bear and fissure bear, a window is created in the facial aspect of the maxilla at the edentulous area and away from the roots of the neighboring teeth. The window which is then, uh, is then cracked inside the sinus cavity. The sinus lining is then reflected from the lateral wall, the floor, and the medial wall of the maxillary sinus using set of sinus lift triggers. The cavity was then filled with bone graft. Then a membrane is used to cover the window and to isolate the graft material from the mucous membrane of the covering flap. This is to prevent the entrance of epithelial cells and fibroblasts from entering the grafted sinus site, thus improving the quality of the newly formed bone in the techniques in this, in that uh, thanks for uh, Dr. Uh, Mustafa, uh, for Dr. Uthman uh, Norwali. Operations. 
infraorbital nerve injury, implant displacement, fixture malalignment, and damage to the adjacent teeth. There are specific post-operative complications to sinus lifting procedures that include post-elevation post sinusitis, labyrinth concussion, sorry, labyrinth concussions, phonetic changes, olfaction changes, graft volume loss, and oroenteral fistula. The problem is, as we can see now, that these cases might be complicated with membrane perforation, need of bone grafting, needs of membrane, and is time wasted. The idea is to elevate the sinus floor utilizing balloon lift technique with simultaneous implant placement. The hypothesis is the using of the balloon lift could overcome the membrane perforation. And utilizing the periosteal distraction idea that was first introduced by Lainde et al. in 1993 that stated that detaching the periosteum from the bone and tenting the periosteum with the fixture will lead to filling this space with blood clots that is going to be organized into bone. This idea is used to eliminate the use of bone grafts. Also, the creation of a small window away from the lifted area is assumed to eliminate the use of the membrane. Finally, simultaneous implant installation is assumed to decrease the time into a maximum into a maximum of six months in case of delayed loading of the fixture. We select healthy patients according to their own words, seeking fixed prosthodontic restoration for their posterior teeth of at least five millimeter available alveolar bone height below the floor of the maxillary sinus and sufficient alveolar bone widths and lengths. After securing an athesia, an incision and two incision line flap was performed. Uh, then the flap was reflected. Then the flap was reflected. And using a, a, a sinus lift surgical diamond surgical bear number eight, uh, a six millimeter diameter window was created away from the crest of the ridge uh, to, uh, in, to open through the sinus. And this, the, we are using the sinus, uh, sinus lift spheres in order to detach and elevate the sinus membrane from surrounding this, this small window. Then the balloon was inflated and, in, and deflated to check the balloon uh, 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 entity and then inserting the balloon inside the window and inflate, in, in, inflate it. Uh, as we said, at one cc of the saline, this can well to raise the sinus six millimeters. And here we can see an intraoperative panoramic radiograph with the radio opaque material to, uh, to the, the balloon which is uh, inflated with saline and uh, this radio opaque material and the sinus, left, uh, sinus floor elevated. And here is the sinus, uh, the sinus membrane while inspiration and expiration to, to, assume, to assure, it's in, uh, in, in, assure that it's intact. Then the surgical guide is inserted inside its, play, inside its place and using the uh, uh, surgical drills, the osteotomy hole of the implant was prepared to the final diameter, then the implant was installed. Here we can see the video. After anesthesia, the, the field is cupped and draped according to the standard techniques of intraoral surgeries. Then using barbarical grade number 15, a two incision line flap was performed. The flap was then reflected and retracted. Using the uh, sinus lift surgical bear, a small window as you see is created sinus lining was detached and reflected from the borders of the window, just from the borders of the window. The balloon is then inflated and deflated outside the patient's mouth. insert the balloon inside the small window. Deflate it with the saline. Inflate it with the saline, sorry. 